Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you um, about what Mozilla has been working on lately in the area of WebRTC and what's coming up next. Um, so let's start with like the pretty basic example of um, how do you make your video um, connecting to a remote site. You basically do your get user media call to get uh, to ask for the permission to access the camera, um, which gets the nice prompt. And uh, if the user um, allows it, then you get the video stream. And then in your JavaScript code, you connect that to the peer connection. For, the, for this presentation, we don't worry about the, the, the far end of, of this. Um, so here's like a little bit of, of sample code, uh, which obviously doesn't work like that. But just to give you an idea, as we heard earlier before, you want like a, a video tech uh, to locally render the video you just got from the camera so people can like basically check that the camera is actually uh, correctly pointing at them. Um, you instantiate your peer connection, then you do your get user media call. And if you get your, your, your stream in there, you first attach it to your, uh, to your local video that basically renders your, your preview. Um, and then you um, attach the tracks uh, to your peer connection. That's the, the normal scenario. So what we have been working on is use a canvas as a video input for a peer connection. Um, hopefully the, the web developers here will be, will be familiar with the canvas. For the voice over IP guys, it's probably like a more a new thing. Um, so yeah, basically what it allows you to do is to um, take a canvas instead of a, of a camera. And it will, uh, um, you get like a video stream out of it and you can connect that to your peer connection. Um, it's supported in Firefox 41, which is, I think, is in beta right now. Um, if you want to try it out, uh, it's right now it's uh, what we call pref off, so you need to go into about config and like switch a, a user preference to turn it on. But we're expecting it to be live in Firefox 43, uh, which is, I believe, hitting the market in November. Um, just to go back to the, to the previous slide, so basically, in the picture, we just replaced the, the, the camera with a canvas as, as the video input. So this would be like, well, you could like draw on the canvas, right? And the, the far end would, would see what you're drawing. Um, sample code. Um, we no longer need a, a video to attach it because the canvas is going to be rendered anyway uh, locally in your browser. Um, and so the, the new thing is basically this, what I highlighted here in red, is the, the capture stream um, function call. Uh, you can um, tell it to um, how many frames per second you want. That's the, the 15. Um, and out you will get like a, a video stream. And then you attach that video stream to your peer connection as, as we have done before with the, with the regular get user media call. Um, to make it a little bit more interesting, um, we can do a get, media, a get user media call first from the camera, get that video stream, connect that video stream to a canvas, do some little magic on the canvas, take that video stream from the canvas and attach that to the peer connection. So that's what I'm going to, to demo now. Let's see. Uh, and I'm not like brave enough to um, actually do this with like two browsers and remote and so on. Uh, so this is all just locally in my Firefox. Um, so here is just a, just a regular canvas on the left side. That's a, it's a peer connection to myself with the remote video being rendered here on the right side. And so I can grab this, this cloth here and like basically it transfers as a video to the far end, which is nice, but yeah, I mean, the more interesting uh, demo is actually the one where we have the local preview window, we have the canvas and the remote video. So if I do share my camera here, so now my video gets first in the canvas inverted and then sent over to the far end and I can play around and like change the colors, pretend that I'm on an old TV, <laughs> or like for the, for the real geeks, like turn myself into an ASCII thing. Um, you can find the, the links to these um, in, the, in my slide deck at the very end. Um, there's also a link to uh, an actual demo which does exactly the same thing, but with like two different browsers, basically uses PeerJS um, to do it for, for two browsers. Um, just watch out that the actual PeerJS 0.3, the official one, uh, currently doesn't work with Firefox. Uh, use the one from Sky, uh, Skyway, they have fixed it. Um, so if, you take, if we take this a little bit further, I think this is where it gets really interesting. 
you can basically take your canvas and like, for example, take multiple cameras and all attach them to the canvas and then you stream off from that one canvas to the, to the peer connection. Or you take your local video and your screen share and mix them together in a canvas and stream that off to the far end, right? Um, so uh, one of my colleagues basically um, used this, this feature recently in a, in a meetup in, in Oslo um, to turn Firefox into an MCU. Um, so he basically ran a headless Firefox on, on Amazon EC2 um, and had an M MCU which was able to do uh, video mixing for up to eight participants. Um, probably not what you want to use for like a, for scaling your service, but like for quick demoing, pretty nice. So yeah, um, I think this is actually uh, one of these pieces where like WebRTC has actually a big advantage over like what's what has been referred earlier here to as the voice over IP technologies, because the Canvas uh, stuff, the APIs are like well known, well supported in the browsers, and if you would have want to do the same thing in a voice over IP installation, it would have meant like writing tons of C++ code, um, deal with desktop phones, whatnot, right? Here you just like, we did the work for you of like, okay, get a video stream out of the canvas and you guys go have fun with like whatever you can do on a canvas, it will get streamed to the far end, right? Um, so yeah, that's uh, I think a, a pretty cool feature, which is hopefully going to go live soon. And the second part of my presentation is about other upcoming features, so you can get uh, get thinking and become creative. Um, more on a, a little bit on the technical side, um, we added IPv6 support. Uh, the FX uh, basically is our internal abbreviation for Firefox, so that's like that comes with Firefox 42. Um, opposed to Google, it's not with a pref, so it's on by default. We'll see how that flies. Um, we added support for ICCP. Uh, in uh, 41, but uh, again, uh, this is prepped off, so you need to go to about uh, config and uh, switch a pref if you want to play with it. Uh, we're probably like going to turn it on um, either in Firefox 43 or 44. Um, what that means is if you, uh, if I make my test calls in the office now, I basically for like a like a call with audio, video, and and a data channel, you get like easily over 50 ICE candidates. Which is like, um, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Interesting to debug, interesting to watch. Um, upcoming audio features. Um, so we're spending quite some time on improving the, the performance of the audio stack in, in Firefox. Um, basically means, for example, like garbage collecting is, uh, was optimized um, and uh, the whole, we're, we're probably going to like rewrite lots of parts there to um, prepare for uh, for more features, for example, the the stereo support um, is going to be coming hopefully in the in the Firefox 43. Um, actually, the actual stereo support is already in. Currently, we're only the only piece left is the Opus codec, uh, which right now it's, I mean it's not the codec itself. It's just the way how we use the Opus, Opus codec is that it does only everything in mono. So that's the only remaining piece to before we before we can uh, you can really test it. Um, yeah, we are increasing uh, the uh, audio from 16 kilohertz to 32 kilohertz to um, further improve the audio quality. Um, and then another feature we're working on is like audio capture for screen sharing, um, probably again in Firefox 43. Uh, this is probably going to be like screen sharing first and then uh, application sharing and tab sharing probably comes later. Uh, I don't know which, which version exactly. Um, more upcoming features is uh, we started working on simulcast, even though it's not uh, not final the spec yet. <laughs> I just heard that uh, about the the controversies in in Seattle. I actually don't want to know about it. <laughs> um, we're working on apply constraints for get user media. Um, that basically allows you um, to, for example, if you made your get user media and it asked for like the highest resolution from the camera you, you, you were able to get. Uh, you can go and like say apply constraints and like I want like a lower resolution video stream right now, right? So like basically if your application for whatever reason like you, you shrank the video or like you figure out that there's not enough bandwidth or whatever, you could like basically shrink the stuff down locally already uh, and save maybe CPU time or bandwidth or whatever. Um, we added in Firefox 43 uh, a bunch of um, 
new uh, prefs and, and abilities to basically control how your ICE candidates uh, are going to be um, exposed to the JavaScript. Uh, so that's in, that comes in Firefox 42. We just uh, yesterday published uh, um, two blog posts about that. Uh, and you can find the, the links in, the, in, the, in my slide deck. Um, and another fun one is that in Firefox 43, we're going to remove the moth prefix from peer collection. So we have already, like, get user media is already unprefixed in Firefox for quite some time. We just have to do the um, media devices get user media. Uh, so peer connection is basically uh, the piece left, which still has a prefix. And so we're going to remove it soon. It's basically stating how, 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 how we think how stable this whole solution is. That's, that's about it. Any questions? Questions? Give me one second to get your microphone. So when you add a new feature like the canvas capture, is generally the path to push that back into the WebRTC standard so that all browsers will support it, or are there? There's, uh, that's based on a, on a draft, um, which is, again, si similar to, to simulcast. It's basically being actively discussed, and uh, it's not final yet. We just went ahead and like uh, we had we got like lots of demand uh, in the community and so we just went ahead and implemented the draft, which also means that potentially the API could still change, uh, but it's like a I think a fairly small API and like not as much worried as with, with simulcast. And in general, I mean, as Mozilla comes up with new ideas and cool new stuff, is the idea that all of it will become common or that there will be some Mozilla val value add maybe in some areas of cool new functionality? Well, I mean, uh, we're an open source company, so we cannot keep anything <laughs> private for us. So like whatever whatever we add, like you will be able to find in our source code anyway. But in general, we, we cooperate with like the Google guys about all of the WebRTC stuff pretty closely. So um, yeah, no, the, the chances of Firefox having like a, a pretty unique really WebRTC API-based feature, I think it's pretty slim. We have time for one more. Anyone in, in the back since, uh, no? <laughs> All right, you lose. So the video mixing is interesting. Is there a delay in combining it into Canvas? And what's the performance that, or the requirements for the guts of the machine? Uh, I, I, I have to be honest, I, I haven't done any, any performance measurement. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a, a performance penalty. Um, as I said, like my colleague restricted his, his MCU demo to eight. That's what he figured out was the biggest that, that Amazon EC2 instance could get or handle for him. Um, but uh, yeah, you probably don't want to try this with like, uh, with, with tons of, um, uh, tons of things. So that's what I said, like you, you don't want to use it for for doing your professional video mixing, um, but it for like little demo purposes, um, might save you some bandwidth, might save you some some time, um, but uh, yeah, um, you would have to. I would anyway probably recommend to like uh, double check it on your machine. Like if if I would tell you like some some performance numbers, there's no guarantee that it will be the same for your machine, right? So great, thank you, Niels. <laughs>